Joza, thank you very much for giving the possibility to participate to DigiTag. It is an exquisite situation for, for me to talk to you. And I am uh, Matteo Pilati, as Oza said, and um, I'm a PhD student at Aarhus, where I'm working with a PhD project, which is actually very much about theorizing uh, this field called image-based 3D uh, recording. Um, and um, yeah, I am. Uh, um, I begin. So in this paper, I'd like to uh, critically and actually frontally address the the contested con conceptions of objectivity and realism, and apply it to image-based 3D modeling, its productions, and the broader context of archaeological work, but still beholding in, uh, an interpre interpretive. A concept of archaeological work. Paradoxically, uh, from uh, a theoretic point of view, and actually for many archaeologists today, when talking of subjectivity, we are actually somehow in a comfort zone. We like it. We acknowledge it. It is, it is good. It is important, of course, to acknowledge this. Whereas when we hear about objectivity, a kind of feeling of unease come up. We are kind of difficult to, we have some problems now in the, in the period, in the era where we are, to deal with the concept of objectivity. And this is probably because uh, we, we today acknowledge the role of interpretation, mostly in hermeneutic terms, in the process of knowledge generation, but at the same time, behold an exclusive view of subjectivity and objectivity. So that subjectivity becomes synonymous of interpretation, which is actually not. There are two dif different uh, distinguished domains. And objectivity is synonymous with positivism, which is also a reduction. So, and this is unfortunate. So I think instead that it is a, this is a way actually to simplify aspect things. In, uh, in particular, actually, when practice is considered, when technologies are introduced, and actually methods have to be developed and actually to, to be followed. So actually, to debate objectivity is a, a very giving and thought-provoking exercise. Uh, but why to take up uh, objectivity and realism uh, today with this presentation? Um, there is a certain reference made in the technical uh, literature. Um, um, here there is some quotes uh, which actually reveal a certain broader concern with realism and objectivity, something properly which is under, under, understated and, uh, and not ex made explicit. It's actually something with what archaeologists try to move into when applying image-based 3D modeling in archaeology. There is also the concern, uh, realistic representations are also the concern of computer vision and photogrammetry and this field which is called image-based 3D modeling. <coughs> and there is also diversified um, and insightful number of propositions about objectivity and realism, can be naturalism also intended, in archaeology, in archaeological theory. And there is my th the thesis here is actually that addressing the conceptual domains of objectivity and realism, ontological and epistemological considerations can be detected, which actually can enrich the debate on the epistemological specificity of image-based 3D representations and how 3D modeling can be integrated in the interpretive work. So to talk of objectivity rather than subjectivity in this paper contributes to consider the relationship between the reality and the representation and the data besides the uh, eternal or the, the big question of the relationship between the subject and the object, the archaeologists and what they work with. Um, there is some relevant, there is a relevant and useful references about realism in the, in the literature. Um, which can be also applied to uh, image based 3D representations. But somehow they are very much uh, related to 2D representations. And here you have many, many, many publications to photographs and to 3D simulations like solid modeling. And uh, whereas image based 3D representations actually can comprehend all of this, but they are then something completely different. Um, the plan is ambitious, so, but I will, I will speak about inter interdisciplinarity and then to uh, talk about different views of objectivity 
uh, already existing, uh, then it is a review, data and archaeological data, distinction there, and the re to put, uh, to show in, uh, making a list of release, release features of image-based representations to go to uh, the temporality aspects and to go to the conclusions. So, um, interdictionality. Um, representational realism and a certain understanding of objectivity becomes inherited and introduced into archaeology in view to, uh, of the interdisciplinary nature of image-based 3D modeling and archaeology, of course. So, um, um, and of course, I have to say that image-based 3D modeling is a derivation of this, uh, is an interfield in a, of computer vision and photogrammetry. It is a concern of both disciplines. The concern for um, uh, computer vision is to model human level capability to extract information from image data and to represent physical uh, reality. Um, applications are then uh, object recognition, navigation, uh, object modeling. For uh, photogrammetry, the concern in this process of information extraction uh, is uh, mostly about uh, accuracy, but as we said, they both collaborate to this um, um, field of 3D, image-based 3D modeling. So some different direct references to realism, to human perceptions are made, wherein the issues of accuracy and detail we sp often spoke about are applied to uh, both geometry and texture uh, of the, uh, of the, um, of the <laughs> surveyed uh, things and necessarily include the three-dimensionality. We're considering objectivity in, uh, at the other end, themes of automation and minimum intervention, lack of physical contact emerge. And these are aspects which are infrastructural, that we actually cannot deselect, we cannot take them off of the, of the procedure if you want to use it. Um, from the technical viewpoint of image-based 3D modeling, um, then realistic representations are those which in geometry and texture accurately adhere to and derive from a physical reality. And this has some important ontological questions and implications. It is about uh, the that the physical reality is assumed to be an external uh, ground truth, that the rest of the data of the images are objective sources of information about that physical uh, reality, that the representation is an accurate a digital reproduction of that ground truth, therefore referring to <coughs> profound mimesis as uh, Gillings, uh, Mark Gillings spoke about, and of replication. So a realistic view of the world, one of externality, of dichotomy, of distance of subjects and objects uh, is included, is, uh, is uh, come in, in our discourses. One where actually the representation also is part, begin to be part of the material world. This uh, has a reference, very interesting one, uh, by Destin and Gallison, who are speaking about mechanical objectivity very thoroughly. Um, and uh, there they make a, a reference precisely to automation, to, the minimum, uh, to a minimum of human intervention. There is an aspect of remote sensing and actually uh, image multiplication. So to make an accurate and detailed and a realistic representation, we need actually cameras, photographs, uh, therefore rest of data, computer software and algorithms. And it is actually, in this case, it is very little muscles. It is now, as, as you can, in the, in the picture here to the left, uh, as compared to the, the, uh, what happens here in the picture on the left, uh, there is a very few drawing devices and archeological interpretation, interpretive work. And because, because of such interdisciplinarity, archaeology is importing a form of mechanical objectivity, actually a known inter interventionist one. And these are actually the conditions for image-based 3D modeling to work successfully. These conditions are intrinsic in the practice, or actually they can be also the craft if we see it in a recording aspect, and we should uh, acknowledge and have this. So in this view, a certain degree of mechanical objectivity is a qualifying and infrastructural aspect of image-based 3D recording applied to archaeological objects and archaeological work. Then we go to feminist uh, critique, uh, um, in this case by Alison Wiley. 
and uh, who, who proposed, who, who proposed uh, the, term, the, the, uh, the concept of mitigated objectivity. It is actually a way to cope positively with interdisciplinary fields, like it is the case of image-based 3D modeling and archaeology, and is to, um, yeah, it is a way to do that. <laughs> so, because given the interdisciplinary and diversified and interconnected nature of the archaeological process of interpretation, and given the great variety of evidence employed by archaeologists to hold an argument, wherein we also have our 3D representations, uh, the, uh, given the theory ledness at the base of any employed procedure, you know, and we have spoken about how image-based remodeling is actually, in which way it is, can be theory laden, but also how uh, the drive information and the evidence is also theory laddedness. It is actually possible to argue that the image-based 3D modeling as procedure and image-based 3D representations as form of evidence are theory laden in a very specific way that resists then interpretations and the criticism emerging from other methods, from other fo forms of evidence, theoretical attitudes, among which the more uh, relativistic conceptions where actually everything is subjective. I think so. Yes. So the objectivity of visual evidence as image-based rep representations emerges from being theory-laden in a particular way, indeed from bearing a specific discourse of objectivity and realism, you know, the mechanical and non-interventionist one, from providing a body of evidence which is offset other bodies of theory, you know, proposing something, and this leads to the other point, which is being independent source of information, resisting a completely free-floating work of interpretation. Um, what, what can we tell out of this that can be bring our thoughts further? Um, that actually not all data are archaeological. Uh, are data always generated by the mobilization of archaeological knowledge? To be just data, do pieces of information need to undergo a process of archaeological interpretation? Actually not. In order to produce these representations, just the representation, uh, 3D representation, no archaeological knowledge is required. It becomes crucial to understand that more in detail how this applies to the 3D data that constitute an image-based representation. And this, I will do it in two, in two slides. There is no theory without other, and um, he also addresses the themes of distance and independence and objectivity. And, um, uh, and, uh, and he has proposed this concept of guarded objectivity. It is already in 1991. Um, in the concept of guarded objectivity, the objective value of material evidence is addressed and reveals and, and, and this interest reveals a concern of contextualizing ontological questions in hermeneutics. In this view, in his view, material evidence, uh, the, actually the physical shape of the site, uh, whether it is culturally uh, uh, formed or not, confronts an otherwise free-floating interpretation. Indeed, to form data, a, dial a dialectical relationship between theory and uh, uh, reality is, is needed. Uh, reality is also needed, not only theory. So, according to how the reality is made of also matter of energy, it is quite processualist uh, uh, attitude, some uh, recall of. It offers objective information cues, for example, coming from sight, sound, smell. It is something that stands against up against us, as he repeats in the uh, in the book of 2012, Entangled is a shared common ground. We can, we can put them in the middle of us to talk together. So in view of this objectivity, this guarded objectivity, it can confront and resist a certain body of theories, interpretation, other forms of evidence. And here it is possible to see the relationship with the, with the mitigated uh, objectivity by, by uh, Wiley. So to take up others' uh, guarded objectivity gives us the, possi to possi the possibility to um, allow ourselves to conceive reality and objectivity within hermetic terms, but actually also to observe that often in our discourses of the theory ledness of methods and technologies and subjectivity of data, we underestimate the origin of theory, where it comes from, from which disciplines those theory come from. 
These independent bodies of theories, like those conveyed with image-based 3D modeling, are indeed not always archaeological, as others, but also uh, other uh, post-processualists uh, often um, uh, uh, intend. Um, the data and representations we come to work with are not always generated by a dialectical relationship between archaeological theory and reality. They can come from the dialectical the relationship between external independent bodies of theories and reality. And this is the case of image-based 3D representations. So now we have seen, uh, uh, yeah. now we have seen some, some, uh, some ways at, at uh, considering uh, objectivity and applying them to image-based 3D uh, modeling, making them re relevant for that. And here, just to put uh, a list uh, of features of a realism of, of image-based uh, 3D representations, but I go directly to the last three. Um, and um, so somehow I want to stress that the representation process, um, actually it's something I told before, but I, I, I need to, to tell you again, that it is actually the, the process of image-based 3D modeling is not connected with an act of archaeological interpretation. That is quite important, and get that unleashes the possibility to tell that that the in, that uh, the, uh, to speak about the in, indiscriminacy. Uh, so it, this indiscriminacy should be considered as it is directly dependent on the mechanical procedure of the image-based 3D modeling. It relates to the application of algorithms which model reality according to the knowledge of universal laws in geometry, in projection, perspective, optics, which actually apply to uh, representations, photographs, and reality altogether. Indeed, image-based 3D modeling does not dis discriminate between what is anthropo anthropogenic and natural, important and marginal, identified or not identified, what should be indexed and what it should not. And another aspect of important aspect of realism is temporality of, of our representation is temporality. It has been very much stressed by Shanks for photography. It was in 1997 in uh, archaeological and photography. Uh, temporality in, in this concept is how practice, experience, craft, interpretation is deployed in time. So it is not only a question of site formation processes. It refers to the fact that representation should have a past. We should design things as have needed to have a past, a present, and a future to, in order to be realistic. They should be considered as having uh, such when they're used analytically. So we're not content with the 3D model as it is. We need to work with, them, with it. And um, yeah, that's it. So, but what does it tell us about uh, our process of uh, 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 recording? That is a proposal. It is a, a, um, where, where the, um, the interpretational process is, can be subdivided in three stages. One, it is uh, the first stage is the on the trowel's edge uh, interpretation, the one which determines the shape of the site, the preliminary boundaries of the context, what and when to document, and actually the mise-en-scene, the context, the points of view, uh, the composition of the picture. But here in this case, no, no, data generate, no, no, no data generated yet. And all this phase is subject-driven archaeological interpretation. And we have our automatic image representation, interpretation, which determines the representation itself, the one which we are going to use. And here, there's no archaeological data, but there are RESTA data are employed. It is computer-based, not archaeological interpretation is employed. And the representation is actually not composed of archaeological data. At the third stage, then, that is what we need to do in order to have the data generated. And this is, again, a phase where subject-driven archaeological interpretation is, uh, is uh, working. And the representation begins to be populated with archaeological data, as we really, really much want. So I go to the last one, uh, which is actually the implication. And there are many deep things in there. Uh, no time. But um, the implication is that image-based 3D representations is actually an intermediary layer of documentation, one which splits 
the archaeological interpretations in two parts, one which is reality-based uh, uh, and one which is representation-supported, not only based on representation, of course, and it is data-generative. That image-based representations are actually objective as evidence in the sense that they are external to us, distant, independent bodies of evidence, and they are also theory-laden in a very specific way. And they can be con they constitute a common ground for the work of interpretation on uh, realistic uh, premises. That this visual evidence resists and constrains the work of interpretation, and that they offer an objective recording of the physical results of interpretation and practice performed in the, in the field. It is not so much a concern with the context, with an uh, in, in interpretation somehow, with, with, the, with the singular context, but it is about the work environment we are working with, with and the results of that work environment. And actually, I should add that including uh, uh, an implication is that including a discourse of objectivity in interpretive theoretical approaches may actually provide a way to bridge uh, far to uh, lasting oppositions between paradigms. Thank you. Mm -hmm.